Hello, and welcome back to Battle Plan, a podcast focused on spiritual warfare. I'm Steve Hemphill, and Battle Plan is an ongoing discussion of how we put our faith into action. The website's active-faith.org. Our goal is to take back territory, expel evil, and heal through spiritual growth. Today, we're going to talk about acts of faith like the bleeding woman. Let me start with the uh, verse here. Let's talk about this, this woman. She had an issue of blood for 12 years. And you know, the law required her to yell unclean from a distance. You know, like, stay back, unclean. I might be contagious, you know, unclean, unclean. They're required by do that, by, to do that. So do you realize that she was actually disobedient to the law by coming close to Jesus, even touching him? is total disobedience. Yet she got the healing she wanted. Now listen to the story. This is Mark 5, 24 to 34 in LT. Jesus went with him and all the people followed, crowding around him. A woman in the crowd who had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding, she had suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the years she had spent everything she had to pay them, but she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I'll be healed. Immediately, the bleeding stopped, and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, look at this crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched me? But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. Then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. Now keep in mind, there's no command to touch the hem of the garment of your favorite rabbi and you'll be healed. There's no example of anyone ever touching a rabbi and then being healed. There was nothing to infer that she would be healed by touching the hem of Jesus's garment. I say nothing to infer. There was an obscure passage in the Old Testament that said when the Messiah comes, there'll be healing in the fringe, even in the fringe of his garments. But this lady was probably illiterate. She probably didn't even know that verse. But she believed. She decided and believed it would heal her. So why? Why did Jesus heal her in spite of her disobedience to the governing law? It was because she acted on her faith. What if she had said, you know, if I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. But I'm just going to pray harder. If I pray harder, that'll work. It never would have happened. She never would have been healed. You see, it took prayer plus action, even though that didn't make any sense. If you say, well, I'm going to pray, but it won't help, then don't pray because it won't help. If you say, I'm going to stake your stake my land, like Steve talks about with these Bible verses on 10 stakes, but it won't help, then don't waste the time doing it because it won't help. See, the Bible's full of acts of faith. Prayer plus action is what the Bible teaches. James 2, 20 and 21 NLT says, don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions? when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see, his faith and his actions worked together. His actions made his faith complete. You know, there's also marching around Jericho, piling stones around Mount Sinai, piling up stones for altars, holding up Moses' arms to beat the Amalekites, on and on and on we could go. What act of faith is God calling you to do? Ask yourself that question. What act of faith is God asking me to do? 
So in light of today's thoughts, let me suggest part of your personal battle plan might be to try adding action to your prayers. Anointing oil, communion, fasting, marching around and claiming. Be creative. Ask God and he'll lead you. You might pray like this. Lord, show me what action to take so that what I'm praying for will begin to happen. In Jesus' name, amen. And let me remind you to keep praying because prayer works. God loves you and I love you. Have a great day.